And hallelujah, let us be seated in the presence of God. Because the Bible says in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. There is rejoicing when you are in the presence of God. No matter what you are going through in life, no matter what may be a situation, no matter what may be a condition, one thing you need to understand as a Christian that God is on the throne. He is in control of everything. At his command, everything uh, has to obey. That's what, because he is a creator. He has created everything for his glory. And everything has to obey God. So your situation cannot be higher than God. But when you place it at the hands of God, is that's when God takes control. But as long as you think, oh, I can do this, I can do that, oh, my wisdom and knowledge, I'm very intelligent, nothing will happen. You need to surrender it to God and say, like Jesus himself had to surrender. What is that? Not my will, let thy will die. Amen. And when he surrender, you see clearly. So we need to surrender every problem. You will go through problems, you will go through trials, you will go through tribulation. Bible clearly says that. If you look into Acts chapter 14 verse 22, the Bible clearly says, you will undergo trials and tribulations and persecution before entering the kingdom of God. Strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in their faith and saying we must go through many tribulations and enter the kingdom of God. Continuing in the faith, you know, because when certain situations happen, you will waver in your faith. Your faith will go down. You see, sometimes you may have faith as a mountain and sometimes in your situation you may not even have faith as a mustard seed. So that's why it says continuing in the faith, in believing in Jesus, hallelujah. He says we must go through many tribulations entering the kingdom of God. And that's why today we're looking at the situation which is happening in Israel. We know what is happening. They are killing one another. The rumors of war, everything has been spoken in the Bible. There is nothing uh, that is not, that's what is happening that is not mentioned in the word of God. He says there will be rumors of war. They will fight again one another. And that's the situation uh, which is happening at the present world. And who can be blamed? It is uh, God's people can be blamed. Why? Because when you see clearly during the time of Joshua, when he became a leader, he was entering into the promised land. And during the time they were already enemies of the Lord. And God said you need to destroy everyone. But here what happened basically during the time, they spared some of the enemies. And God said because you spared them, they will be a snare to your eye as long as you live. And that's what is happening today. Let me show you scripture. Today we are going because that's what the Holy Spirit wants to minister each one of us at the moment what is happening in Israel. Hallelujah. So let us quickly turn our Bibles to the book of Numbers chapter 33 and verse 55. Let's see what the Lord is saying. In Numbers chapter 33 and verse 55, let's see what it says clearly. Okay, but if you do not drive out the inhabitant of the land from before you, then it will be that those who are left remain shall be irritated in your eyes and thorns in your side, and they shall harass you in the land where you dwell. Now, who is harassing? The Palestinians are harassing the Israelis. He says clearly, if you do not drive them completely, he says you must finish them off. Nothing must be there. You see clearly, my brother and sister in Christ, even if you look into medical science, if you are suffering from cancer, they will always destroy the root. You know why they destroy the root? So that the cancer can never come back. But if only they just remove a part of it down the road, it, there is a chance for the cancer to come again. But when they, you know, tackle the root, there is no way that the cancer can come. So God was telling them that you must destroy, you must kill them and finish them off. But what they did, uh, that is a mistake which the children of Israel did. That is the same mistake that even King Saul did. When God told kill the Amalekite king, he spared his life. The same thing God is telling you need to kill. That during those times, it was the Palestine who were there. And see today, they are a snare. They are always fighting. You see clearly my brother and sister in Christ. And because when God says something, you need to do. So what they say, they are irritating. In the eyes of who? In the eyes of the Israelis. But if they would have listened and have drawn out everything today, you know, Israel would have been a peaceful country. My brother and sister in Christ. Because always you need to understand, why is Israel being a main target? You know why? Because God has made a covenant with Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He made a covenant with Jacob and he said, you shall no more be called Jacob. But you shall be called Israel and he says, I will make my covenant. I will make my covenant. 
God promised him and God said, not only covenant, I will defend this city for the sake of my servant, David. David. The Bible says clearly. Look at uh, the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 37 and verse 35. See what God is telling clearly. In Isaiah chapter 37 and verse 35. Isaiah 37 and verse 35. Let's see what he says clearly. Hallelujah. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. You see clearly? Next was what he says clearly. He says, I will defend. Then the angel of the Lord went out and killed the the camp of the Assyrian, 185,000. And when the people arose early in the morning, they were all caught left. Now this situation, physically it happened. Because this Assyrian king, Sennacherib, he killed all the neighboring, you know, the kingdom, the gentile kingdom. So he's challenging King Hezekiah. He says, even you I will finish off like that. And he's boasting here. I killed all this. The gods could do nothing. Even your God is one of them. But Hezekiah was a man who went into the presence of God. He says, God, you listen to the rebuke of the king, of the Assyrian king, Sennacherib. And see what he is telling. He says, for you are not a god of stone, or you are not a god of gold or silver. You are the living God. Amen. And immediately the Bible says, he challenged it. But he did not know who he is challenging. Like today, the Arab countries, they are challenging Israel. But they do not know behind Israel who is there. Is the mighty God of Israel. That's what even David, when Goliath looked at him. You see, I told you, you know, they always had a problem. Goliath way is again from the Palestine. You see clearly? He's challenging this time. Who? David! And David says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who defile the living God? Amen. Hallelujah. You see clearly, my brother and sister in Christ, and this king over here, he challenged you. You know what? The angel of the Lord. God sent one angel. And how many people died? One lakh, uh, 185,000 were killed in that night by one angel of the Lord. And when it happened, you know what this king did? He ran away. He ran away back to his land. And the Bible says while he was worshipping his God, two of his sons came from behind and they chopped off his head. That's the way he died. Because this guy was boasting. He was boasting. But who he was boasting against? He was boasting against the God of Israel. Now it happened to pass as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroth, his God, that his sons, Abramelech and Sazeres, struck him down with the sword and they escaped into the land of Arahat. The Astrado, his son, reigned there in the place. The land of Arahat is where the ark of the cow, where the ark, Noah's ark landed. Mount Harath. You see clearly, they ran away. But before that, what God is telling, I will defend this city because of David. Amen. God made a covenant with David. He says, He is my anointed. I will not alter my words. I will not change my words. I will not lie in my holiness. So God will defend Israel. No matter who comes against God. No matter who is against you. I told you something. God does not go by number. Because God is backing up Israel because of the covenant. Israel shall not be forgotten. You know why? Because God says, Israel is my firstborn. God himself, his love is still there. He's in covenant with God. And the devil wants to destroy the people who have the covenant. See, clearly, if you look into Revelation chapter 12, the woman, you know, with the baby and 12 stars, you know who is that actually? The Roman Catholic portrayed it as the Blessed Virgin Mary, but it's not the, the, the Blessed Virgin Mary. It is Israel. You see, clearly, Israel, that is basically. And the Bible says that he went to make war. Amen. In 12 verse 17, if you see in Revelation, he went to make war with the woman and the descendants. Hallelujah. You see? And the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of offspring to keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You see? The dragon. Who is the dragon? The devil. And the devil is one plan the devil has to kill man. The first person who used this plan to execute was Abel through Cain. You see clearly, my brother and sister in Christ. And that's why here, the plan of the Palestines or the plan of the Arabs 
is to destroy the city or to kill the city of Tik. To execute. Why? Because they are in covenant with God. They are in a covenant. But God is saying, I will defend this city. I will magnify myself. They will know that I am the God who rules. He magnified himself before Pharaoh. He said, I hardened the heart of Pharaoh so that I may magnify my power and Pharaoh shall know that I am the Lord God who dwells. In the book of Ezekiel 39 and verse 28, he says, I will magnify. He says that many countries will come from the north. For Jerusalem will be surrounded by enemies. Jesus himself said that. In the 24th chapter of Matthew, what he says? Jerusalem shall be surrendered by the enemies. And today Jerusalem is being targeted. We are seeing everything is open to interpretation because everything is mentioned in the Bible. What is going to happen? And that's why in advance God has said pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Pray because only pray can win the battle. Amen. Because one thing you need to understand my brother and sister in Christ. We are not fighting a physical battle. We are fighting in the spiritual battle. And every time the devil was to kill the children of God. He orchestrated the same murder during the time of Second World War through Hitler, the Holocaust. He was able to kill 6 million Jews from Poland, from Austria and from Hungary. Through who was orchestrated that? Who was the agent of the devil? It was Hitler. You see? You see, look at this tree. He says, and when he orchestrated, even the neighboring country did not know, did not know what was happening over there. But when the Russians came and took over Germany and they saw all this, it, that's when it came out into the paper, it came out to the... Till then what Hitler was doing to the Jewish people, no one knew anything. Because today we have technology. Today we have TV, we have broadcasting station. But during those times they had nothing. They had nothing. Today anything happened, you are just phone and taking and next it becomes viral. You see, they're killing people, it's becoming viral. How? Huh? Because there is someone there with a the phone ready and he's taking the picture and he's there putting it on Facebook, he's putting it on Instagram, or he's putting it in YouTube, and all over the world knows what is happening. But during the time of the Second World War, from 1942 to 47, he killed more than six million. Who was behind that? The devil. The devil has agents. He's behind you, my brother and sister. That's way he has a problem. With the people who have the covenant of God. He's behind the woman. The Bible clearly says. He's behind the woman and offspring and a descendant. He wants to wipe them away. Because of the covenant that God has made. But one thing you need to understand. God will defend the city. God will fight the battle. Because the battle does not belong to man. It belongs to God. During the time of King Joshua, he said in 2 Chronicles 20, 17, Stand still and you shall see the salvation of God. For the battle belongs to God. And for God to win the battle, we as Christians, we need to stand with Israel Amen. by praying. Hallelujah. You will not need to fight in the battle. Position yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. For the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. If the Lord is with you, who is against you does not matter. That's what Paul says. If God is with me, who can stand against me? No matter even there are more than 10 million people against. If God is on your side, you will kill all those 10 million. Bible clearly says, my brother, my sister in Christ and today. That is what is happening. And that's what God wants it to be fulfilled. You know, because what they did is they spared them. And he said, they will be like a thorn in the flesh. Till today, they are a thorn in the flesh. Why? Because they did not listen to what God said. I'm telling you, my brother and sister in Christ, and that's what it is you need to understand. That God will defend. And during that time, Israel will be saved. You know, when they will cry out in their pain, they will cry out to Jehovah. But Jehovah will not come. You know why? Jehovah will not come in the New Testament where they cry out even to Jehovah because they still believe in Jehovah. They don't believe in Jesus Christ. They rejected the Messiah. They rejected uh, Jesus. They will cry. Fulfilling of biblical prophecy there. Look at the Zechariah chapter 12 from 8 to 10. Let's read Zechariah chapter 12 from 8 to 10. Zechariah, the book of Zechariah chapter 12. 
of 8 to 10. Let's see what he says clearly. In that day, the Lord will defend. Again, you see, the inhabitant of Jerusalem, the one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. Next verse. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nation that comes against Jerusalem. Think so clearly, biblical. There's nothing that you or we do not know. No, God reveals everything in His Word. The problem is you're not able to see because you don't meditate on the Word of God. You see clearly, and the next verse, see what He says clearly. See what He says, and I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look upon me. Who they have pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his holy son. And grieve for him as one grieves for his firstborn. You see the spirit of grace and supplication. They will look upon me. Who, who pierced Jesus Christ? Who wanted Jesus to be crucified? It is the Jews. Because they said this man uh, is considering himself to be the son of God. This man is making himself to be God. He is blaspheming. So who appears they, they will look. So when they call out because the prosecutor, Lord, your yeah, God, is thus when instead of Jehovah, Jesus will appear. Amen. And they'll think, oh, why Jesus is coming, calling about Jehovah? They'll say, oh, this man we rejected. This man we crucified. Because this man will come and he will show his nail pierced hands and his legs. And then Israel will be saved. I'm telling you today. People think, oh, the Jewish people will not be. Who said? Who said? Why is the devil fighting against the Jewish nation, Israel? You tell me. Tell me. Why does when a person wants to get born again, the devil is trying that person not to get born again? Because Bible fulfills and said that Israel will be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the deliverer will come out of where? Out of Zion. The redeemer will come out of where? Out of Zion. So every prophetic word which is mentioned in the Bible has to come from Zion, which means Salem, which means Jerusalem. I'm telling you, it's clearly given clearly. And then during those times, they will look upon him, they'll call him, they will ask for forgiveness. Lord, forgive us. They will look up. That's what the Bible says. They look upon whom and they will mourn for him as one mourns for his holy son. You see, and that day there shall be a great morning in Jerusalem like the morning of Hadar Ramon in the plains of Megiddo. This is all the fulfillment which is going to take place, my brother and sister in Christ. And Israel will be saved because Bible says clearly, let look into Isaiah 59 verse 20 and 21. Isaiah 59 verse 20 and 21. The Redeemer will come to Zion. And those who are turned from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. He will take away their transgression. He will blot out their transgression, their iniquities. And he will remember them uh, no more. Because Bible says clearly. If you look into Isaiah 43 verse 25. Let's see what he says. I shall blot out my transgression. I shall blot out your transgression like a thick cloud. And I shall remember your sin no more. I am he who blots out your transgression for my own sake. And I will not remember. You know, God will never leave his covenant. Hallelujah. That's why I always say, you know, God will never break his covenant. You can break his covenant and walk away from God. You can give up upon God and say, Lord, I don't believe in you anything. I don't believe that you even exist. But God will never give up on you. Because of the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Amen. And God will defend his people. You know why? Because they have covenant with him. They bear a covenant with him. You see, a covenant is nothing but it's an agreement between two people. So God will defend Israel. You don't need other people to come and support. You don't need America to come and say, I will send warships uh, because of me. And tomorrow America will say, oh, tomorrow Israel won the war is because we send warships into the Middle East. You don't need that. God don't need someone else. When God wanted to manifest himself in the life of Gideon, there were more than 32,000 people over there. He says, he filtered them. He said, 300 people is enough. I will give victory. Hallelujah. Because God does not go by number. People go by number. People go by majority. Oh, the more, the more better for us. But God does not go like Even one person, he can give victory to that uh, 
one person because God wants to manifest his power and his glory because God said, I will never share my glory with man. Amen. Hallelujah. God will never share his glory with man. He wants him to be great. He says, they shall know that I am the Lord God who exercise. So God will manifest himself in Israel and they will come to know like who this person. You know why? I'll tell you something. If they're fighting against man, man will lose. But if they're fighting against God, there's nowhere. Amen. You see clearly, I'm telling you today, you can't fight against God. You can fight against man. You can prevail against man. But if God is backing up that country, or if God is backing up his people, then it's better for you to keep your mouth shut. Turn back and go back to your country. Instead of telling, I will do this and I can do this, nothing will going to work out. My brother and sister in Christ. And that's what is exactly happening at the present moment. I asked the Lord, Lord, what is happening? God revealed and showed all these scriptures. Amen. He said, I will defend the city of David. I will defend because of my covenant. And God is a jealous God. You see clearly. And that's way whoever tried, uh, you know, to revenge against Israel, God destroyed them all. Look at the things. My brother and sister, and today we know that the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is hand. Amen. We have to prepare ourselves before his coming. Any time from now he's coming. So Israel will be saved because he is God's firstborn. God will save. Many people, oh, the Jewish people will not be saved. Who said? So the Jewish people will not be saved. Why the devil is behind the Jewish people? I'll tell you something. The devil will not waste his time unnecessary. I'm telling you today, he will not waste his time unnecessary because you carry something is behind you. You see clearly, because you carry something. Because when Jesus came, you know what happened? The devil hardened the heart of the Jews. That's why they did not believe in him. But whereas the Gentiles, they received the gospel. They received the gospel. They did not reject Jesus Christ. The Gentiles never rejected. But the Jews rejected it. But there will be a time they will cry out to God. Lord, what is this suffering? Look my people. Look my son is dying. Look everything. Bible says clearly that Rachel will be crying. Because none of her children are saying. They killed. I'll tell you see. With covenant he killed. He wanted to finish off Moses. What he did? The devil. He killed the firstborn. Of oh? The Israelites. Right? Why? Because Moses had a covenant. He wanted to finish that person. The second person who he wanted to finish off again. The first time he entered into Pharaoh and he wanted to kill who? Moses. Moses was hit for three months. And then he was transferred into where? Into the enemy's camp. Where Pharaoh's daughter, he grew up there. The second person who the devil wanted to terminate was Jesus Christ. He entered into Herod. He was looking again for this person. Who is this person? Where is he? The Bible says he was secretly hidden. And the Lord appeared to Joseph in a night. Through the angel. And intervened into the situation and says, Take the mother and the child. And take him to Egypt. So they waited in Egypt. Till who died? Till Herod died. You know why? Because Jesus was again fulfilling prophecy. In Hebrew chapter 11 verse 1. Let's see what the word of God says. In Hebrew chapter 11 verse 1. 1 and 2 I think it is. See, let's see. Hebrew chapter 11 verse 1. Not Hebrew. It is Osaya. 11 verse 1. Let's see what it says. When Israel was a child, I loved him and out of Egypt, I called my son. This prophecy is for two people. One was Moses. Because when he was in Egypt, he was living in sin. God called him from there, took him to the thing. Jesus Christ was hidden in Egypt because Herod wanted to kill him. Who wanted to kill him? The devil wanted to kill him. See what I'm trying to tell you. Why? Because Moses had a covenant with God. And Jesus Christ was also covenant with God. So the devil wanted to kill him. You see clearly. And today the devil wants to kill you. Why? Because the Bible says, in John 10.10, 10, for the thief come to kill, to steal, to steal and, to and to destroy. So what is he doing now? He's killing everyone. He's destroying property. He's destroying buildings. He's causing confusion. People are confused. They do not know. Today they are alive. Next minute they do not know what is going to happen. The thief does not come, come 
to accept to steal and to kill and to destroy and I have come that they have life and that they may have it more abundant and that's why they're killing and when they're killing you know what is happening uh, the enemy when he's killing they're thinking they're doing a offer to God you know Jesus himself said that Do you know that when the enemy is killing the children of God you want me to show look into John chapter 16 and verse 2 John chapter 16 and verse 2 see what Jesus said over here John chapter 16 and verse 2. That's what they are doing today to Israel. They will put you out of the synagogues. Because till today, they are synagogues in Jerusalem. Okay. The time is coming that whoever kills you, what? Will think that he offers God's service. You see? They will kill you. And they are telling, Lord, I killed this fellow. I did good service to you. See, that's what it is clearly says. See, the time will come, they will kill you. The enemy will kill you. And they will tell to the God, Oh, see what great service we have done. We killed your enemies. My brother and sister in Christ. But Jesus Christ said that whoever kills with the sword shall perish with the sword. Hallelujah. My brother and sister in Christ. And thus way, we need to pray. Hallelujah. We need to pray for our brethren. Because, oh, we are not involved in the war, so why should I pray? What I have to do with Israel? I have nothing to do. I am living in India. I am living in UK. I am very safe. I am fine. Tomorrow you may be a target. The devil will not leave you. It will spread like cancer. And it is already spreading in the countries. You know, they are revolting. They are fighting. They are causing confusion. I am telling you today, my brother and sister in Christ, this is the end of days. We are living in the most dangerous period in history, darkness will cover the face of the earth. Amen. It's time for you to go and pray. No playing games. I don't know. Because tomorrow you can be a target. You see clearly. Because the spirit of Antichrist is already at work. Who said that? Who said? John said that. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 2 and 3. Let's see that before I finish my message. The first letter of John chapter 4. First 1, 2 and 3. Let's read the three verses before I finish my message today. Beloved, do not believe in every spirit, but test the spirit whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Next one. By this you shall know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. The next one. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist which you have heard was coming and now is already in the world. He says it's already there. But the son of man, the son of prediction, or the son of lawlessness has to be manifested yet. That means Antichrist as a person needs to be manifested, but the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. It's happening. The spirit of Antichrist and how you will know that whoever denies that Jesus Christ is the son of God, whoever denies that Jesus Christ came from God is the spirit of Antichrist. Clearly is given and he says it's already in the world. Amen. But the son of prediction or the son of lawlessness or the son of sin that the Antichrist as a person is not yet manifested. Just like see Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, he was already there in the creation, right? We agree that. The Bible says he was also standing at the right hand side of the ancient of days in the book of Daniel. But where was Jesus Christ manifested? In the New Testament. Amen. So the same thing, the spirit of Antichrist is already at work. But... The person is not yet being manifested. Now people are thinking it may be Hitler, it may be this person, it may be that person, it may be Pope, it may be that one. Don't assume. Because Bible does not say who is that person. Bible did not say when that is going to happen. They asked the same question. When it is going to happen? Jesus said, I do not know. My angels do not know. But only my father knows, he said. So second then they asked another question before Jesus Christ can go to heaven. You know what? In Acts 1 verse 5 they say, when will God restore back the kingdom to who? To Israel. 
you see again they didn't say, oh when will the god restore back the kingdom to the gentiles or to unbelievers no you see clearly if you look in acts chapter 1 verse 5 and 6 clearly they ask the same question when will god restore back therefore when they have come together they ask him lord will you at this time restore the kingdom to israel and jesus said it is not in your time hallelujah my brother he said to him it is not for you to know the times of the season with the father has put in his own authority you know the kingdom has to be restored back to who to israel you know what will happen in the end of days all the people who left israel they will come back to the nation hallelujah that's going to happen that's way till today all the jewish people wherever they are scattered because of the prophecy they will be scattered they will come back to the land they will support the land that's why they support israel is not a beggar country it's a very rich country look at the top people they all jewish look at tesco owner of tesco is jewish look at the uh, owner of marks and spencer the big big companies multinational companies all owners are jewish people because god blessed them because of the covenant he made and today you and i as a gentile we come into the covenant through Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he says, all power in heaven and earth and understanding, he says clearly. And that's where Paul says, he's not only the God of the Jews, but he's a God of the Gentiles. Because Jesus himself has redeemed us from the curse so that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles. So today, we are also in covenant. So even today, the devil is behind you. Don't say, oh, the devil is only behind the Jewish people because they come. No! The devil is behind you because now you also have been added into the covenant. Hallelujah. See, the, the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we may receive uh, the promise of the Spirit through faith. And that's what is happening, my brother and sister in Christ. And that's what the Lord said. What is happening at the moment? It is time for you to wake up Amen. from your sleep. It's time to go back on your knees and pray. Hallelujah. Pray. Hallelujah. Because the word of God said in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, If my people who are called by my name, who will seek me, and who will turn away from the wicked ways, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal the land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves, pray, and pray, and seek my face, and turn away from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin. And I will heal the land. So let's close our eyes. Almighty loving Father, we praise you, we worship, we thank you, Lord, mighty God of Israel, that you shall be with us. You will never leave us nor forsake us because of the covenant that you have made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the covenant that you have made with David. You said, I will defend the city because of my covenant that I have made to my servant David. God, you will remember the people of Israel.